So I'm going to confess to being a bit jealous because this university, in fact, this room is, is full of really talented, intelligent people doing fascinating and important research. And my colleagues can go to parties and meet new people and tell them what they do. And their new friends are like, oh, that's really interesting. Tell me about it. When I go to parties and tell people what I do, people look at me in a slightly pitying and apologetic way and say, oh, and then walk away to talk to someone else. Because <laughs> my research interest is why all the people who have urinary incontinence fall over. And it's not sexy, and it's not something that we like to talk about in polite conversation, but it's really important. About one person in 10 over the age of 65 has incontinence. Around one person in four over the age of 65 has urgency, which is the sudden feeling that you've really got to go to the bathroom and you can't hold on. Half of people with even severe incontinence will never tell anyone about it. They won't tell their family, they won't tell their doctor. Falls and accidents are the sixth leading cause of death for older Canadians. 3,000 seniors die each year in Canada because of falls. And falls cause things like broken hips and a requirement to go into residential or nursing home care. The cost of dealing with falls for older adults is predicted to be $4.5 billion per year by the end of the next decade. Falls and incontinence are very closely linked. If you have incontinence, you're about one and a half times as likely to fall over as if you haven't. We don't know why that is. If you read the textbooks, they'll tell you that people rush to the bathroom and trip, or they're incontinent and slip in their urine. And that's been accepted for years as just something that's true and something that we, we know. But it's not true. There's no evidence at all to support it. What we do know is that if you really need the bathroom, how you walk changes. You slow down, you take shorter steps, and your step length varies. We think that this is because urgency acts as a source of diverted attention. So you're concentrating on your bladder, and therefore you can't concentrate on how you're walking. You're not allowed to talk on your cell phone while you drive because it distracts you. It's a source of diverted attention. So we're testing our hypothesis using three-dimensional motion capture technology, exactly the same as Peter Jackson used to make Gollum in Lord of the Rings. We take our patient, we put some nice reflected markers on them, and we watch them walk, and we analyse how they walk when they're completely undistracted, when they're performing a task which diverts their attention, and when they really, really need to get to the bathroom. We're comparing how their gait changes. We don't know if treating people's incontinence can reduce their risk of falls, partly because the drugs that we use increase your risk of falls. We know that if you train people to do two things at once, their gait improves while they're distracted. So we're going to use our research to develop a program of dual task training. We're going to get people to practice walking and doing something else, like naming as many farm animals as they can. Sitasunga will not come up, I suspect. Um, we know that if you train people, their gait improves. We're hoping to be able to use this to develop a safe and non-pharmacological method to improve people's gait, reduce their falls risk, and improve their bladder. And I'm hoping that when we meet at a party, I can tell you about my research, and you won't give me that sad look and walk away. Thank you very much. <laughs>